three ready to roll. Red lead, main tower, start to take off, wind at 323, four nine. you're watching in action right now are part of the Air Force Reserve, citizen airmen, poised for our protection. In the great American tradition of the citizen soldier, the Air Force Reserves can be speedily mobilized in time of national crisis. These trained men are every ready. They are a vital part of the overall defense planning of the United States. These three flying boxcars of the 97th Troop Carrier Squadron are now taking off on a bundle drop exercise. In the next half hour, you're going to see a lot more of the Air Force Reserve in action, including their men, their planes, and other equipment here in the maintenance hangar. You'll learn how these Minutemen of 1959 play a very important role in the overall Air Force Air Reserve program. I'm Bill Nielsen. And this is Success Story. Success Story, an on-the-spot live telecast brought to you each week from somewhere in the Pacific Northwest as a public service by Richfield, makers of new 100-plus boron super-octane gasoline and a complete line of years ahead petroleum products. Tonight, our success story cameras visit live and direct the 97th Troop Carrier Squadron and the 17th Aerial Port Squadron of the Air Force Reserve at Payne Air Force Base, south of Everett, Washington. The 97th is a detached squadron of the 349th Troop Carrier Wing of Hamilton Air Force Base, California. A nucleus of the squadron works here at Payne Field on a full-time basis, and some 350 reserves from communities all around Puget Sound come here for regular training and duty each month. Planes and crews get in flying time every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. On the second weekend of every month, the entire squadron is out for two days. As a ready reserve, the plane, their crews, and the freight handlers of the port squadron figure in the overall wartime planning. Right now, in time of peace, they support the active establishment by hauling thousands of tons of freight and thousands of personnel each year. And the Air Force Reserve is also subject to call for domestic emergency mission. For example, they could be called upon to evacuate disaster victims or to drop emergency supplies to a disaster area. In about 15 minutes, the lead plane that took off is going to make a paratainer or multiple bundle drop. And we're also going to see how heavier equipment, such as a jeep, can be dropped to troops in the field. President Eisenhower has said, the military security of the United States requires reserves so organized and trained as units that they can be speedily mobilized to reinforce the active forces in combat or to man defense operations at home. The 97th Troop Carrier Squadron is such a unit. It has been active four years. The core of the unit is something over 70 officers and men who are full-time civil service employees of the reserve as well as reservists. In other words, the unit is a going concern all the time, and it can be fully manned and fully operational on very short notice. The men you see now working on one of the squadron's C-119s are some of the full-time employees of the reserve. It takes 20 man hours of work on the ground for every one hour of flight. So you can see why these men in the maintenance hangar are on the job and busy every day. Two weeks are spent in periodic inspections after every 150 hours of flight. Every 15 hours, the planes get a post-flight inspection, which requires about 15 man hours of work. And once a day, there is pre-flight inspection, to which two men devote about three hours each. Technically, the Air Force Reserve is a tenant here at Payne Field. 
This is actually the home base of the 326th fighter group. And the hangar you see now is the alert hangar of the F-89 jet interceptors that operate out of Payne Air Force Base. In addition to the fighter group's primary duty, they also support the reserve base right here on the base. And some reservists work with their men on weekend duty. In a few minutes, we're going to watch a scramble by the fighter interceptor squadron with two of the F-89s rolling out of this hangar and taking off on an exercise mission. But first, let's meet the new commander of Payne Air Force Base who came to this assignment just a little over a month ago. Now let's meet Colonel William Schaefer, the base commander here. Colonel, although we're perhaps a few weeks late, we'd like to publicly welcome you to the Pacific Northwest. Well, thank you, Bill. Uh, this is my first assignment up in the Northwest area, but my first impression has certainly been favorable, and I'm sure they'll be lasting. Just what is the function of the 326th Fighter Group, Colonel? Well, in the main, our main concern is air defense of the United States and America, Bill. Uh, we have combat-ready airplanes and air crews uh, ready to go at all times. Our crews are on alert and ready to scramble on a moment's notice should uh, radar pick up an unidentified target. How do you maintain this alert? Well, we're tied in through the great uh, North American Air Defense Complex, of course, but more specifically, we're directly responsible to General Bond's division at uh, McCord Air Force Base. There, of course, the radar's uh, uh, blips are all monitored, and should um, scramble action be necessary, we're directed from there. What's the relationship between the base here and the reserve unit on the base? Well, side by side with our air defense role, uh, we, of course, support the 97th Troop Carrier Squadron. We furnish facilities and supplies for these people and support being a two-way street, they in turn uh, give us vital airlift. Is this mutual support pretty much true throughout the Air Force Air Reserve? This is true, Bill, right. Colonel, it's a real interesting story indeed, and our thanks to you. Success story viewers may remember two years ago when our cameras covered GCI, or Ground Controlled Intercept, operations at McCord Air Force Base. Jet pilots stand alert duty here at Payne 2, as Colonel Schaefer has said. When GCI spots unknown aircraft on radar, the pilots and planes are here ready to scramble. In this exercise, the order has already come in. This is a scramble. Scramble 2 F-89s. ATC clears the ramp went by climb 360 degrees to the F-1 before we can back. 360, measure 30 all Right, copied. Point my same tower, clerk to take off when a three, two zero degrees, six nine tower, similar, two nighter, a nine or six. two jets are off only minutes after the first scramble order was received. These two pilots will remain in contact with GCI and will soon establish radio contact with the radar site. Thus, they will be continually informed on target altitude and speed and guided in until they themselves are in position to take over the intercept. What we are seeing is a normal scramble of two jet fighters equipped with automatically fired rockets and missiles. If, however, they find that they need help, other pilots here and at other bases are on alert and ready to join them. From this point on, a remarkably widespread communication system will carry a moment-by-moment -moment report on the progress of the flight. This is Colonel T.G. Boy, the commander of the 97th Troop Carrier Squadron. Colonel Boy, what's the importance of the Air Force Reserve and the overall defense picture in our country today? The Air Force has a pool of over a half a million reservists to call on in the event of a mobilization or a national emergency. A good many of these are not actively participating in the training programs, but about 65,000 of them are assigned to 
troop carrier wing, such as the one that we, or troop carrier wings, with a total of uh, 45 squadrons. The 97th is one of those squadrons. And those squadrons then are ready to go on a moment's notice, correct? That's right, we are. Just how long would it take for the 97th to become activated and ready to go in case of an emergency? Well, in a recent test alert we had, we had uh, sufficient personnel aboard to start our flying activities in a matter of four hours. That's real swift movement indeed. Just, do you have any idea how many hours were flown by the 97th last year? Well, yes, it was a little over 4,000 hours. What does that represent in terms of miles? Well, I can only give you the miles we flew on directed missions. Uh, that was about 269,000 miles. Believe me, we all owe a debt of gratitude to you and all members of the Air Force Reserve. Thanks, Colonel, Thank very you. much. Let's have a look now at one of the reserve C-119 flying boxcars, just like the planes we saw in action a little earlier. On tactical missions, these planes fly with a basic five-man crew of pilot, co-pilot, engineer, navigator, and radio operator. She has a cruising speed of 175 knots, or a little over 200 miles per hour. She can haul a payload of from 10 to 12,000 pounds. While in the fast-moving air age, this plane is now being replaced, she is actually a 1953 model and still capable of a lot of airlift duty. As you can see, the C-119 carries three jeeps quite handily. On troop carrier duty, she carries 42 troops. The craft can be fitted for stretchers and used for aerial medical evacuation if needed. In realistic airlift training, reservists actually carry cargo and personnel for the commands of the United States Air Force and sometimes for other services. In these operations, the various squadrons of the Air Force Reserve have airlifted millions of pounds of cargo since they became active units several years ago. The twin boom design of the C-119 leaves the rear end open for loading or unloading. There are removable clamshell doors on the rear, and for some types of drops, the plane flies with the clamshells removed. In this particular instance, we illustrated a type of loading that could be used if the planes were to land for unloading at the other end of the line. Reserve squadrons are also trained for airdrop missions, and it's that type of unloading we'll watch in just a moment. Right now, the three Jeeps are all in in a matter of seconds. As for the drop, what we are going to watch is an extraction, as distinct from a static drop. The parachute will come out first, and it will pull out or extract the Jeep. And let's see how we're doing now with the plane in the air. Drop area clear, cleared para drop. All right, sir, red also. Now watch for the shoot. Roger, your course is good, airspeed, good. drop is made from about 1,250 feet altitude. Jeep extracted and floating down to the ground. In another case, it might be a gun or some other equipment dropped to troops in the field. In any case, it is another example of the flying techniques practiced by the men of the Air Force Reserve in our 97th Troop Carrier Squadron. You are viewing Success Story, a series of on-the-spot telecasts originating each week somewhere in the...